it is one thing if you don't, it's another thing if you won't. So what am I talking about? Okay, so quick question. Take the time and ask yourself, just kind of brainstorm, just kind of think about this. Name a preacher, a pastor that you admire. Someone that you really look up to, someone that when you hear them speak, you put a lot of validity in what they say that you think this person uh, is really a godly person. Just name someone. Think of some people that you that you seen on TV or heard on the radio or seen on the Internet, on YouTube, what have you, that you really think is a good, godly man. Think about it for a second. Maybe Tony Evans. Maybe John MacArthur. Maybe Vody Bacham. Some of you like Paul Washer. David Jeremiah. Think about those names. Maybe there's some other ones that, that come to that come to name. Could be uh, Andy Woods. Uh, I see Stephen Lawson. Think about it for a second. Now ask yourself this question. Name something that you disagree with them about. Think about it. What do you disagree with them about? Because if you don't disagree with them, if you can find no fault, no wrong in them, you might be guilty of idolizing them and making them into an icon. Now, let's be clear. Everybody, and I do mean everyone that you know of, has messed up. Everyone has gotten something wrong. Everyone has said something that they ought not to have said or ought not have done. But if you can't name something that they said wrong or done wrong, you might be guilty of idolizing them. Now, when I go down the list, some of those folks on that list you might not like. Some of those people on the list you might like. But I don't know if you've noticed this, but especially on YouTube, especially in social media circles, people pick certain faces, certain names, they follow them, and they listen to them intently. And I mean so much so that they really can do no wrong. I am, now I've, I've got some differences. And I'll share a few differences with some of these people uh, in a little bit. But I learned early on that there's no man who, who is ultimately above reproach. Now, we, we know what we mean when the Bible says a person being above reproach. Uh, that the person is not um, living in some sort of guilt-ridden uh, or some sort of sin-ridden lifestyle. But sometimes we make people out to be the be-all to end-all. Well, let's go to the scriptures real quick. The Bible says this about worshiping anyone. He says one in Luke 4, 8. He says, and Jesus answered him and says, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Well, Corey, obviously that seems like a no-brainer. That seems like an obvious no-brainer. Of course, I'm only going to worship the Lord. Well, is that true? Do you act like it? I have, <laughs> I've seen people get to the point to where if you say the smallest thing, the slightest criticism about a person, then that person is your enemy. There are literally channels, guys, channels devoted to, not by the people or by their church, but outside people who admire these people so much that they have channels that are dedicated to just them. There are channels that talk only about John MacArthur. There are channels that talk only about uh, Tony Evans. There are channels that talk only about Vody Bauckham or primarily about Vody Bauckham uh, or primarily about Paul Washer. Uh, there are channels out there that, that are fixated on uh, one person and that's not a family member that's doing it. Now, you've got some people out there also who are idolizing and who have made icons out of the wrong people. Type in the name Gino Jennings. You'll find a bunch of channels who all they do is speak about Gino Jennings. I mean, you, you, you mean a, a whole cult. <laughs> you mean a whole cult. And so much so that they don't know the scriptures themselves very well, because if they did, they would probably, by and large, leave <laughs> or stop following him. But we're not even talking about a Geno Jennings. We're not talking about some of the people who are 
uh, on the outs in, in terms of doctrine. No, we're not talking about them. No, we're talking about people who uh, have sound doctrine. I mean, real sound doctrine, because listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Those people whose names that I put up, I'll go through them again. Tony Evans. Do I think that he has sound doctrine? I do. As a matter of fact, disclaimer, uh, I was a former member of his church. Are there some things that I disagree with him on? Sure. Well, what about John MacArthur? Yeah, I think John MacArthur is a very uh, sound teacher. Now, again, sound doesn't mean perfect. Sound doesn't mean that the person is batting 100%. Not the case at all. Do I have some things that I have uh, that I disagree with John MacArthur on? Yeah, there are. Uh, well, what about Vody Bakum? Love Vody Bakum, um, but I do disagree with him on a, a few things. I just do. Paul Washer, same thing. David Jeremiah, I sure do. Now, does that mean that I don't like them? I, I, listen, I admire all of them. I, I do. Um, partly because I know what it's like when you're leading, especially the ones who are pastors. Uh, the Tony Evans, the John MacArthur's of the world, um, the David Jeremiah's, those who are pastors, not um, personalities, not people that, that may go or, or may serve under someone else. But when you're in leadership, it's, it's a whole new ball game. See, we think sometimes that what we see on YouTube or uh, is that that's all it really is. But no, being a pastor is, is, is a lot different because you are uh, you're not a theologian only. You're not a scholar only. You are a shepherd and you've got people's lives um, that you are entrusted over to guide them. And, and it's not just doctrinal issues, because on YouTube, what do we do? We, we talk a lot about doctrinal stuff, don't we? Uh, one saved, always saved. Can you lose your salvation? Tongues. Um, have, have these gifts cease. We talk about those things. But when you're a pastor, you'll be surprised how often you spend talking about anything but doctor. It, it happens all the time. Why? Because somebody needs rent. Somebody's dealing with, um, you know, some sickness in their family. And so, yeah, you, you, you spend time spreading the gospel, but, and doctrine does come into play, but there are some other things that, that, that are, are, are kind of pressing, right? Some pastors have to worry about the lights being on, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, every pastor isn't, isn't a pastor of a mega church, and so sometimes they have to worry about that. A lot of pastors are bivocational, so they have a lot of other things on their plate. And so what's easy to forget, though, especially for us in the YouTube world, uh, who are not familiar with these pastors. Now, I've, I've had the pleasure to uh, have interacted with two of them, um, but well, I, could I say that I know them personally? No, um, but that being said, I do understand uh, what a pastor has to go through, and I do understand how they also have to keep themselves sharpened and so forth and, and all the different things that come at you, but the people on the outside look at them and all they see is the polish, the end result, right? And if they say something that you like or that you hear, if it if it if it touches something internally, it's hard not to um, be a fan of that person. And so when I put I put the scripture up again, it says, "Do not or we should not worship anyone else but the Lord our God. Only Him shall we serve." Now, obviously, these are the words coming out of Jesus's mouth. Now, you wouldn't think that a Christian would need to have this told to him over and over again. You wouldn't think so because, heck, we're Christians. We don't need to worry about that, do we? But the fact of the matter is, we do. Let me just put it this way. There are people who, are, who attract other people, even in Christian and non-Christian circles. Uh, for whatever reason, attractive people are found by people who look what they are actually, who look for what they have to offer. Here's what I mean. Um, let's say you are a person who can speak to someone about finances and a person is looking to fix their finances. Well, you are attracted to that person. I'm not talking about in a in a physical um, amorous sense. I'm speaking in the sense of, hey, I can feel a need for you. And so here you are. You're attracted to what I'm saying. You're attracted to what I'm saying. OK. And so there are some that are good, some that are bad. Now, understand this is also the M.O. Of Satan. That's how he works. Think about it. Satan will try to get you messed up on things that you are attracted to. Think about Eve. Here she is in the garden 
And how was she able to easily succumb to eating the fruit? Well, the Bible says in Genesis 3 that it, the fruit was pleasing to her eye. So she had already been checking it out. It, the fruit was already attractive. So Satan just kind of whispered in her ear and kind of leaned into it a little bit more to get her to go in a direction that her heart or her eyes all ready to go. What about Judas? Well, Judas liked money. That was Judas's issue. But then think about this also with Satan. Satan tried the exact same tactic with who else? With Jesus. Jesus seeks to be worshiped. So what did Satan do? Hey, follow me, submit to me, and I'll have everyone worshiping you if you just worship me first. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a stupid um, thing for Satan to even offer, but he will try to tempt you uh, with what you're looking for. Now, Jesus is not going to be tempting, so that was, that was a no-go from the start, right? But with us, sometimes, sometimes we fall into the trap and we find ourselves putting greater emphasis on the person who is attractive to us. Here's what I mean. Let me, let me, let me see if I can make this a little clearer. Those people that I spoke of and even those that you also put in in the chats, those that you named, they speak to something that you're looking for. The example, you're looking for sound teaching. Well, guess what? If they offer sound teaching, at least from what you've heard so far, well, then you want to hear more of it because the world is so full of bad teaching, full of just some. Mm. I don't I don't I don't know what the teaching is, but it's so bad, so nasty out there, doctrinally speaking, that when you come across someone who is just remotely biblical, you want to listen to more. Now, and some of these guys say some things that are just you wouldn't even think it would be that profound if it were said 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50 years ago. People defending um, the unborn, people defending uh, men being men and women being women. That was that was obvious at that time. And so now even a person like a uh, Vody Bakum, who speaks a lot towards social issues, he 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 is not the the greatest of theologians. And I don't think he would even say so as uh, himself as well, even though he is um, a dean of a college and actually uh, possibly he may become the president of the SBC. Uh, but he would not be someone that you would call a uh, a theologian or a theologian's theologian. Uh, not to say that he's that he's not intelligent um, or theological in his thinking. It's not what I'm saying. But his 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 greatest what what has helped him out the most is him dealing with social issues. And these are things that you just you're finding less and less or or uh, in short supply nowadays. And so he he feels a need. People are looking for something, someone to speak truth, biblical truth, godly truth. And so therefore he's attractive to the world who's looking to hear for or hear some truth. Right. Uh, someone like a like a Tony Evans who can speak to more practical things in your life, how you're living. Uh, he becomes very attractive. Uh, to hear how you ought to deal with your family and so forth. Very, uh, listen, uh, I'm, I'm in the Dallas area. This, there's a reason why uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship has grown to, to the way it's grown now. And he, ha he hasn't been one of those who, who likes to hoop and holler and have all these different gimmicks. You won't see cars on stage and, and flashing lights and things like that. So that's made him attractive. Uh, John MacArthur has been staunch and, 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 and just kind of uh, consistent for over 50 years. He hadn't changed. John MacArthur preaches the exact same way today as he did 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? It's just, if you listen to him, uh, one of his old sermons, and all you did was just heard it, you couldn't tell that it wasn't from last week. He, he sounds the same. He preaches the same. He's been consistent. A person like a Paul Washer, who's also speaking to uh, masculinity and how men ought to be, well, that's attractive to a, to a world that doesn't know what uh, a real man's supposed to be like. And so... That's why uh, these men are appealing. Well, what's the problem, Corey? Well, I'll tell you the problem. No one likes to be wrong. I mean, raise your hand if you like to be wrong. Who, who, who do you know likes to be wrong? Someone said to me, Corey, you just like to be right. Well, okay, does that mean you just like to be wrong? You just want to be right. Well, that means you must want to, want to be wrong. Everybody likes to be right and want to be right. And so when you listen to these people, and they say something to you and it makes sense. You don't realize what happens, guys, is you kind of buy into it. You kind of buy into what they're saying. 
in sales, if I could get you to agree, I want to get you to agree, and I'll just give you two little secrets. I won't tell you how I go about doing it or, or what, what a, a, a salesman who knows what he's doing would do it, but we want to get you to do two things. We want you to either listen, to lean in a little bit or to give some sort of indication that you are listening or we want you to nod your head in agreement. See, if I can get you to lean in a little bit, you started off back here and as I'm talking, something that I said made sense. You know what? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and, and you're nodding your head. Guess what's happened? You have on your own bought into what I'm saying and you've invested in my words. Now, these aren't necessarily my words. I didn't invent these words that I'm saying if they're truth, but you've invested in them. And what happens is you want to hear more. And because you want to hear more, you'll spend more time. And since you don't want to be wrong, since you don't want to be the person who, who has made a mistake. Now, if a person comes out and says something just outlandish and stupid, and you, you know what, I'm through with this guy. Um, you tend to give that person a little more leeway. How many people do you know of that have bought into their pastor and then when their pa you've heard their pastor say something just awful, they still listen to the person. They still st stick with the guy. They won't leave the person, right? Because they've, they've invested in that person. Paul makes a statement that I think is, is applicable. He says in, let's put it up on the screen, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. In other words, follow him if he's following Christ, right? Imitate him as long as he's imitating Christ. Well, the problem is, if you go to a church, let's say like a, uh, an Elevation Church, if you go to Transformation Church where, uh, was it, Mike Todd? Mike Todd is a pastor, or Elevation Church where Stephen Furtick is a pastor, or the Potter's House where um, T.D. Jakes is a pastor. If you go to one of these churches, what you're going to hear at some point in time, especially what brought you in, you're going to hear something truthful, Okay. You're going to hear something true. Now, am I saying everything that you're going to hear is going to be true? Nope. I'm definitely not saying about that of these three churches. But you're going to hear something that's going to resonate with you and strike a chord. With you. you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Real good preaching there, preacher. And you bought into it. And so then when he says something off the wall, something absolutely nutty and stupid, because you bought in, one, you may not even pay attention to it. You may not even heard Stephen Furtick say, I am God Almighty. You may not even pay attention to what he was saying, or you might be willing to give someone like a Michael Todd a pass when he says that Jesus never fulfilled his potential. Hmm. What are you saying? Because you're so profound. Let me hear what you say. Say it again. Oh, that make wow, you preaching good there. Or we'll use they'll use words that kind of get you get you pumped up that speak to your emotions, especially women, especially women. T.D. Jakes has a large following that's predominantly women because he, he speaks words that, that they can relate to about a woman, about us being pregnant and about to birth something in the spirit. Well, women can, can, can get on board with that, right? Because they can, they can, they can identify with being pregnant or birthing something. Even if they're not even pregnant themselves, uh, they might want to be or have been pregnant. And so I can identify with that. And he speaks to my hurt. Now, he ain't telling me anything truthful, uh, but he's speaking to my hurt. He makes me feel like that I'm part of the team. And so if I can get them excited and offer promises, well, then I want one today, even though the promises are mostly empty. But the more you listen, the more you become invested in them, the more you become a supporter. And here's the problem, guys. If you're a supporter of someone, do you know what you end up becoming? You end up becoming an advocate of that person. No one wants to. Have you ever bought a product and you liked the product when you got it, took it home? After a while, it didn't quite work out right. And uh, you kept giving the old college try with this product and you didn't want to take it back. We do that with a lot of things that we buy because we don't want to accept the fact that nah, I didn't put my money in some junk. I'm not talking about like right off the bat. If you buy something and immediately it's a lemon, you're going to take it back. 
because you're not invested in it. But if you've invested some time in it, you'd rather work with that old broke down car than go on and get your new car. Because I, I, I love this car. This car uh, gets four miles a gallon, but you've had it for, for 12 years. You love this car, but you won't get rid of it. Car is done doing nothing for you. Well, it's paid for. Yeah, but you're spending $300, $300 $400 a month to keep it fixed. Plus the gas. So, but that's how we do. Once we buy into something and we're supportive of some, someone, we become an advocate of someone. Well, like Paul says, imitate me or follow me as I follow Christ. What has ended up happening is we end up picking and choosing sides. We end up making it out to be, let me pull the scripture up. We end up making it out to be that that person that we're in leagues with, that's my guy. That's my man. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified with you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Well, so what you do is, you exchange those names, all the names that we see there, Paul, Apollos, and you exchange them for your favorite preacher. So I follow uh, Tony Evans. I follow John MacArthur. I follow Vody Bauckham. I follow Cephas. Are you, are, you, are you seeing my point? And so you can't say anything bad about these people. I mean, it's to the point that if you say anything bad, if you say anything derogatory, they are going to want to get your um, your hide, okay? <laughs> Even the person is wrong. We see that all the, often, don't we? We see a person say something. I'm going to deal with these in a second. Um, they'll say something that we know is unbiblical or off a little bit or not quite right, and what do we do? We defend that person. Matter of fact, Sometimes we do so because maybe we're not as adept in the scriptures as we ought to be. And so rather than uh, disagreeing with the person, you know what? Uh, I think this person is sharper than you. So who are you to criticize this person? Happens all the time. If I say, listen, if I say something about Geno Jennings, uh, by and large, his audience is biblically illiterate. Well, and it makes no, it, it makes perfectly good sense since the person um, who's leading them is also biblically illiterate. And so when I say something, What's their first response? Who are you to question him? He's a man of God. He's been sent by God. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so you've got to be careful. Now, those are the people who we know are just off. We've talked about the Marcus Rivers of the world and how they still have a, a following. Because heretics and false teachers have a following too. How, how could that be? Well, because those people bought into them. Those people have found themselves to be in leagues with them and they won't let go no matter what. Now, let me give you an example how when you are when you're bought in with someone, how it's easy not to not to let them go, not to see clearly. Let me give you an example. And I, I, I won't I won't attack the Cowboy fans, but you all recall a few years back when the Cowboys were in the playoffs and were playing the Packers. Uh, fourth and something, the Cowboys would pass and hit hit number 88, Des Bryant. Cowboys fans swerping down, it was a catch. Um, Packers fans say it was not a catch. Well, what was it? Well, depending upon uh, whose team you're rooting for. Now, the referees came back and said, according to the rule, it's not a catch. But Cowboy fans were outraged because that's my team. But I promise you, if the roles were reversed, if it was a Green Bay Packers wide receiver um, who went up to make the catch, Cowboys fans would have said that wasn't a catch. It all depends upon who you have allegiance to. And we as Christians think that we don't have allegiance to any of these men but to God. Well, that's not always true. The fact of the matter is we do become, we become friendly with people. We don't even know these folks, but we act like we do. And so we defend them. All of these people I've had an issue with. Uh, and so, and I think a lot of these are by and large issues that a lot of people have had issues with. Uh, doesn't mean that we throw them out and that we're just totally through with them. Let, let me give you an example. I love Tony Evans. But is Tony Evans perfect? Has he said some things that are incorrect? 
I, I disagree with Tony Evans's take on trans trans dispensationalism. Um, I think that's a stretch. Uh, but now, am I through with Tony Evans? Has he also come out and said some things that I think I wouldn't go so far with that on some social issues? It seems like he's departed from uh, the norm. It seems like he's departed from how he used to be. But am I now uh, anti Tony Evans? Nope. Nope. Matter of fact, have no problem with going to check him out again. Love Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, especially what it's done in the community. So no problem whatsoever. Well, well, what about John MacArthur? Well, love John MacArthur, and he is the envy of every preacher. 50 years in ministry, but he said some things that I've got to, I, 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 I got to kind of disagree with you on. And done some things. Listen, I don't care who you are. Uh, the fact of the matter is that, that they erred in how they handled the whole Eileen Gray situation and having her excommunicated. There's no way around it. There just, there just isn't. And I'm saying this as a fan. Okay, but if you think, if you cannot find, if you cannot find one reason to say John MacArthur or Tony Evans or whomever, you're wrong, you are uh, idolizing these people. You have made them into an icon and you are in sin. You just are. Uh, Paul said, follow me or imitate me as I imitate Christ. He didn't say just imitate me, period. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I disagree. I disagree with him on what he said about the mark of the beast and on what he said about the confusion about the atonement, about the blood, the necessity for it. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. But do I think John MacArthur is sound? Yes, I do. Without without question. What about Vody Bacham? Yeah, Vody Bacham is just, listen. You could not convince me in a billion years that Vody Bauckham's eschatology is correct. Vody Bauckham's hermetology, Vody Bauckham's hermeneutics is inconsistent. Being amillennial, I think that's just, I, that, I, don't, see, I don't see that being biblical. But more than that, to say that uh, what he, what, how he treats Israel, I think, that's, I think he's wrong. Now, let's say, uh, let's say I'm dead right and he's dead wrong. Let's just assume for, for the sake of argument that I'm right and he's wrong. Would I just totally ignore and disagree with him? I, you know, I'm through with Bodie Bacham. No. And again, you can't find a... Ch there are channels that, are, that have grown mightily. And when I say grown mightily because because of uh, using Bodie Bacham in his sermons and so forth, uh, or the Paul Washers or the Steve Lawsons, yeah. Now, is there a little bit of too much focus on them? Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll give you what I think is a solution uh, in just uh, in just a little bit. Somebody like a David Jeremiah. I think David Jeremiah is solid. However, and I think rightly so, people have made an issue out of him going on TBN and helping them with their fundraising. Do I think that was a bad decision? I, I, th I think so. I think so. Uh, am I going to condemn him? No. Um, well, well, wait a minute, Corey. He he's he shouldn't be in bed with the great Satan. He, with these people, these people are are, are uh, heretics. Well, yeah, but we're on YouTube right now, and YouTube ain't godly. So, um, but the point is, though, guys, these are some things that I found that I have issues with men who I actually uh, admire. And I'm not I'm not at a point to where I think that these men are so so high that I can't question them. But we've got people that do that. And that's a problem, guys. And I, I, I can't tell you how much that bothers me. I can't tell you how much it bothers me to think that there are people who you can't say anything about. The first time you, oh, you're hating on them, you're jealous, you're this, you're that. So you, I can't have an opinion because this guy has a large church. I can't have an opinion about this person because he's got a, a large following. It, really? Because Satan has a larger following. Satan has a larger church. So I can't I, I, I can't have any opinions on any satanic activity, none whatsoever. Is that, is that, is that right? Does that even make sense? Does it even sound right to you? You don't have a problem if it was someone who, who is not your idol. If we're talking about, hey, go, out, go in all day long if you want to on Stephen Furtick, but keep your hand off John MacArthur. Go all day long uh, if you want to on T.D. Jakes. But keep your hands off of Vody Bacham. Go all day long if you want to on Geno Jennings, but you better not say anything about Paul Washer. No, that's not how we're going to do it. Nope. As a matter of fact, 
told you guys next week, uh, I've got some words for a person who I'm cool with. Now, they may not be cool with me, but I'm cool with them. I'm, I, I, I still love them. But I got some doctrinal words for them. I got some doctrinal words for them uh, because I don't hold anybody in that high esteem. Partly because I think partly because some, some men in the past who I did hold in high esteem let me down and let me down in, 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 a, in a big way. And then it took me a while to know them personally because these were these were act, an actual theologian. I mean, a theolo I'm talking about someone who who um, let me just say this. When Vody Bacham came to our church a few times because uh, he and our pastor were our friends, when he came to the church, uh, he's not in league with our pastor in terms of doctrine. He couldn't he couldn't hold a candle to um, well he, he's passed away now, but the late Doctor Bolton he could he couldn't hold a candle to him. He he just I know it's going to bother you guys, but he couldn't, and he said so out of his mouth. But here's a but but when you see that. All of these men are just, what are they? Men. Frail, prone to make mistakes. And so I give them a pass for that because the problem is when they let you down, what can happen is you could not, not just turn your back on that person. You can turn your back on all of the faith, on all the beliefs. You know what? I'm not dealing with Christians anymore. I'm, I'm just going to read my Bible to myself. I'll, I won't even go to church anymore. That's what can end up happening. And so there's a couple of things you can do to kind of remedy this. To not make any of these people idols. Number one, study. Study. That, that goes without saying, right? But keep studying. Read on your own. Go back and listen, listen to your pastor or your preacher, whomever it is. Listen to them skeptically. Okay? Meaning that, okay, let me let me see if there is a is he, is that is that right? Let me let me check and see. Is that absolute? That might not be right. Let me check and see. Oh, okay, okay, you're right on that. Okay, cool. Or no, what? You know what? I got a problem with what you just said, pastor, preacher, teacher. Let me let me let me check this out. I'm not I'm not getting it. Study. Paul commended the Bereans for not just taking his word for it, but going and looking themselves. But then another thing, aside from studying, the second solution is, um, like yeah, Lisa, be a Berean. The second thing is broaden your horizons. Look for other teachers. If I said name 10 great preachers, most of you would struggle to name 10 great preachers that you know of because we only surround ourselves with listening to these same people. This is what we do. And so uh, there are other preachers out there. Uh, I knew we were in a class and professor was teaching and, and one of the guys in the class said, wow, this teaching is just awesome. I cannot believe how awesome and wonderful this teaching is. And so as we left the class, I'm talking to a buddy of mine and I said, listen, you say this, and now granted, he was right, the, te the teaching was great, but I said, you say this because you haven't heard teaching from other people. Uh, everyone doesn't think the same way that, that he thinks or goes down the same line of thinking that he does. And so open yourself up. That's one thing that seminary does. Uh, it's not to get you to uh, think ill of the Bible, but to get you to use your brain and not just regurgitate what someone else has said, but to put it together. And so uh, those are the two suggestions that I would make. I would say... I would say study as often as you can, as much as you can, every day. Listen to whoever you listen to skeptically. Try to find out, figure out where this person might be wrong. They're wrong on something. And if you don't think they're wrong on anything, well, then you are in danger of idolizing that person. And if you are idolizing that person, you are in sin. Okay? And then secondly, go and actually look for other great teachers. Amen?